Well, I'm not scared of Halloween, are you? Well, I'm not scared of anything that goes boo. Well, I'm not scared of trick-or-treaters. I'm not scared of big death eaters. I'm not scared of Halloween, are you? Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Letterboxd Lottery. Uh, this is the second installment of this series, the first of which you can watch here. But if you don't feel like watching that, basically what we're doing today is I have a list here of every horror film ever made, and it has 23,000 films on this list. And what we're going to do is select one randomly through a series of random number generators to look at, review, watch, make fun of, uh, promote, shout out. I mean, this list has everything from Coraline all the way to Night of the Beast, 1997. And if that sounded like an oddly specific title, it's because I actually recorded this whole segment already. And I'm actually having to redo it because I don't actually understand how audio works. You know, in the last episode, I jokingly said Halloween is only a few weeks away. But, I mean, as a wise man once said, Halloween's upon us. So... I figured it's about time for another episode. Oh yeah, and to spice things up for this episode, last time I just had the list sorted by just film release date, so earliest to newest, but this time I have it sorted by film popularity based on letterboxed algorithm. So that means the lower page numbers are going to be stuff like The Shining, The Lighthouse, stuff like that that's really popular, and the higher we go, the less popular that means the films are going to be. You guys already knew all that, so let's just go in and find out what page we're going to be looking at. Page 62! That's a pretty high number! Alright, let's see, page 62. Alright, well the first thing I saw was Butt Crack. Is that the name? Oh yeah, that's... That's just, that's just the name of the film. All right, so let's just sort of scroll through, see if I recognize anything, see if I've even seen anything on this page. I mean, page 62. <laughs> we're, we're getting down there. We have The Nostril Picker, 1988. President's Day, 2010. I don't, are, they, are these real movies? I don't know what the process is for getting a page on Letterboxd, but I feel like if Butt Crack 1998 can get a page, it can't be all that difficult. All right, so now we're gonna pick the row, and then on that row there will be five films that we'll sort of talk about more in depth, and then we'll pick today's film. So let's jump right into that, I guess. Okay, <laughs> row 11, okay, so we're fairly far down. So we got Mother Krampus 2017, Super Hybrid 2010, Mrs. Claus 2018, the magnetic, the, the mag, yeah, that says magnetic. I thought it was like majestic, but no, that is, that says magnetic. The magnetic, mon 1953, okay. And Hunting Grounds 2015. So we got some, so these are all sans the magnetic monster. These are all 2010s. All right, let's take a look at some of these then. So let's see, Mother Krampus 2017. Based on the myth of Frau Perchta, a witch that comes on the 12 days of Christmas, taking children each night. Alright. Well, that seems pretty straightforward. Wait, what year did, like, the regular Krampus come out? Was it, That was 2015. So, Mother Krampus, okay. Oh, it's on Tubi. So, that means, it, that means it's great. So, you can see, like, only 273 people have watched this film on Letterboxd. So you see, like, 62, like, that's pretty far down there, if you think about it. Alright, it has a 1.9 star average, it's 90 minutes long, okay, well, okay, we're off to a strong start. Super Hybrid even has, like, a banner, that's pretty cool. Wow, this one's available on almost everything. And it's also on Tubi, for free, so, what do you know? Late one night, a mysterious car is brought into the Chicago police impound garage after a deadly traffic accident. The on-call mechanics soon discover the car has a mind of its own. With hundreds of horsepower and two tons of reinforced steel at its command, it's a seemingly unstoppable killing machine capable of outrunning and outwitting humans. 
I feel like a killer car is like a concept that can only be done once, you know? <laughs> like it seems like, like there has to be enough ideas out there where we can progress beyond the killer car after like it's been done, you know, once or twice, you know? That seems like an idea you don't need to necessarily copy. It seems like almost anyone could come up with a better idea than killer car. <laughs> But hey, it has a 2.4 average, so what do I know? Mrs. Claus is on Amazon Prime and Tubi, okay. Students attending a Christmas party at a sorority house with a sinister past are stalked by a bloodthirsty killer disguised as Mrs. Claus. Well, now I know the killer is not Mrs. Claus. It's just a disguise. I mean, I, I assume that's a plot point. Right? They were like, oh, it's Mrs. Claus. And then the reveal is that, oh, it's just some person. So, so far we have Krampus knockoff, Christine knockoff, and Black Christmas knockoff. I mean, so far, so good. <laughs> All right, last but certainly not least, the magnetic monster. A young scientist experiment goes awry when he creates a monster from a radioactive isotope and finds that the creature consumes energy to grow in size and terrorize the nearby town. I mean, it's... It's not super hybrid. <laughs> yeah, this one's only available for on DVD according to this, but... I feel like the only reason this one is so far down on popularity is just because it's old. Like, I don't- I don't- I, I seriously doubt it's on the same level as Mother Krampus, you know? Like, it's probably just like a... 50s monster movie, you know? So I'm definitely, I am hoping we don't get that one, for sure. All right, but how could I forget? We still have one more, Hunting Grounds, which is available again on Tubi. How about that? It's just kind of strange how all of these low popularity movies are on Tubi for free. It's kind of interesting. After losing their home following a devastating tragedy, a father and son are forced to move to an old family cabin. Neither reacts well to being thrown into this new world. The son's attempts- Okay, this is too many sentences for a summary. Like, that that did not need to be a sentence. I don't need to know that to watch the movie. You know, like, that's not a selling point. You gotta hook me in. Come on, Hunting Grounds 2015. The son's attempt to relate to his father are complicated when two old friends arrive for a weekend of hunting. This trip into the forest will unearth not only buried feelings of guilt and betrayal, but also a tribe of Sasquatch that are determined to protect their land. A tribe of Sasquatch? Okay, maybe my Bigfoot terminology is off, but I thought there- I thought, like, Bigfoot was only, like, one thing. Like, it was a singular entity, you know? Are there- there are many Bigfoots or Sasquatches? Do they have children? Yes, the- probably throughout all of North America, which would be like from Alaska, in, through Canada, and all the way down to Florida, different states where they're seen, uh, the estimates range between, say, 2,000 on the low end to, say, up to 10,000, which sounds like a lot if a they lot. were all in the same area, but if you spread that out across all North America, that's very, very rare, Adam. Oddly enough, this sounds like the most original one so far. <laughs> all right. Now we know what we're up against. Now let's find out. The moment of truth. Number four, which is... Uh, the Magnetic Monster. The only one that isn't available for free on Tubi.tv. The only one that I have to buy the DVD for. Yay! Do I get to- can I veto? Is that a thing? Wait, no. <laughs> Whole thing's on daily motion. We're all good. <laughs> I guess rules are rules, but... Ah. Uh, I mean, I'm sticking with it. We're doing this. And we're just gonna- we're just gonna have to wear this one out, you know? Because that's the fun of the game, you know? The fun of the game is not knowing if it's gonna be fun. And so, you know, first one, last one was pretty fun. This one is gonna be awful. You know, next one could be, we could get The Shining next time. It just bothers me that we got the one thing that was different out of those five. So yeah, The Magnetic Monster, 1953. 
So I'm definitely, I am hoping we don't get that one for sure. There wasn't even a monster. You know, I don't even know what to say here, really. It was just so... Ah. Well, it was 50s clickbait is what it was. I mean, you have two things going on in the title, and one of those things is not present in the movie. I mean, I guess to its credit, there was something that was magnetic. Mr. Simon! What's this? It's stuck! It's not stuck, it's magnetized. Simon, these are magnetized too! I can't understand it. But there was at no point a monster that was also magnetic. I guess I'll do like a run through of the plot really quick, even though <laughs> that shouldn't be very difficult to do. Basically some like scientist guy creates, or like, I think he discovers some kind of like new element that feeds on metal or I think it's like electrons, they try to explain it and it feeds on that every 11 hours so that it doubles in size. And if it isn't fed, then it draws things towards it using the power of magnets or something. So then these like other scientists track down that first guy and he's like, he's on a plane. He went on a plane for some reason. And, but he, but he's already dead, he died of radiation poisoning. So then the other scientists like realize if they don't stop this element, it'll become so large that the earth will be like knocked off its axis and like fly into space, I think. I think th those were their exact words, I'm pretty sure. So then they decide to try and overload it with energy so that it becomes so full that it like, I don't know, disappears. It, it, it just vanishes. So then they go to Canada and uh, do that. And they live happily ever after the end. Hey, you're not so skinny. I'm working on it. I'm getting bigger and better. The secret of multiplication. What are you talking about? I'm not sure. Excepting they both seem to have something to do with multiplication. Done through love, the result is a baby, a, a lovely thing. But without love, done through hate or, or with fear, the result is a monster, an element that grows. And if you think I'm just glossing over all of the exciting parts, you're... You're clearly expecting too much from the magnetic monster. <laughs> I guess it is kind of like a weird case of me not wanting to be too hard on it, because I also recognize that it's just a 50s monster movie, which I mean, I mean, that's just what you made <laughs> during the 50s. That's what made the money. So, I mean, I guess I can't blame it too much for just following the trend. It was actually written and directed by Kurt Siadmak, who has a pretty massive filmography. Uh, he's probably most well known for writing the 1941 Wolfman, which is probably <laughs> the only reason they let him keep making movies for like 30 years. I tried to think about it and I think I've discovered why like I'm not mad at this and it's because it's hard to be mad at something that boils down to a formula movie. Hint that something bad is gonna happen. 2280 disintegrations per minute. Much higher than yesterday's concentration. Something bad happens. Overdose of radiation. Must have been dead for hours. They learn about the bad thing that happened. Keep it under constant electric charge. Electric charge. Why? It's hungry. It has to be fed constantly. Or it will reach out its magnetic arm and grab at anything within its reach and kill it. The bad thing poses an even bigger threat. As long as the Earth remains in equilibrium, nothing will change. But very soon, this element is going to make the Earth eccentric. It's going to fly out of its orbit into space. They figure out how to stop the bad thing. How do you plan to use my Delta Trump? I'm going to try to kill that thing we sent you. How are you going about it? Choke it. I don't follow you. It feeds on energy. Our only chance is to overfeed it. Ram all available power down its throat. Choke it to death. They try to stop the bad thing. They 
almost fail at stopping the bad thing. They do stop the bad thing. We killed it! It's gone. It's gone forever. Roll credits. I will say this is extra boring because it like tries to be scientific. There are all of these like long sequences of them just explaining all the like technology that they're using and how many gigajoules the anti-mask mega computer needs to calculate the magnetic monster's mass. I mean, to its credit, it's a spin on the, you know, classic monster movie by making the, rather than a supernatural threat, there is a uh, scientific backed, like, disaster thing, which I guess was in a way ahead of its time, I guess, but it wasn't executed well at all. Plus, I'm still mad about that title. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's pretty unforgivable in my book. Oh yeah, something else I wanted to mention was just the near absurd amount of narration that just felt so out of place. Specially trained technicians from the state university prepared to receive the element being transported across the field under police guard. Every precaution was taken by the men who would accompany the element on its long journey. But even then, we failed to realize the power of Denker's creation. The element was reaching out with invisible fingers gripping metallic objects with terrifying strength. I mean, there's nothing else to really say about this. Uh, there was a couple of parts where I laughed out loud just from some <laughs> pretty, pretty quirky dialogue. The operatives of OSI are called Amen. Amen. Sounds like the final word of a prayer. It is not. Yet within this tiny molecule, there's a tremendous force that once unlocked can create or destroy planets. Our Earth is a planet. From now on, I'm the boss. We're gonna buy a house, and you're gonna be fed under my personal supervision. Medical science says, and the fourth And I say, hot cakes, syrup, sausage, white bread. If you say so. I say so. <laughs> I mean, I could go on and do like a review and point out specific things, but I mean, like, do you guys care? Like, I mean, it'd be a waste of my time. I think I'd be wasting your time. You guys don't care. Uh, so I'm just, I'm leaving it at that. I don't have anything else to say. You know, sometimes we'll get an alien apocalypse. Other times, <laughs> you get the magnetic monster. Do I can understand it. But I mean, now that this is a official series, maybe next time we'll get something really good. Uh, three out of ten, I guess? I mean, I, I don't think that really matters.